Hi, for this video, we are going to use the TI Inspire graphing calculator to help us find the probability for a normally distributed data set. For the situation that we have is we have a monthly utility bills in a certain city are normally distributed with a mean of $110 and a standard deviation of $13. We are going to find the probability that a randomly selected utility bill in this city is A, less than $85, B, between $90 and $120, and C, more than $130. So with this, the two parameters of interest that you must always have in order to use a normal distribution are you have to know the mean of the population and the standard deviation. So those are the first two things that we would want to identify in the problem. So for this particular problem, it follows a normal model with a mean of 110, and a standard deviation of 13. So now what we're going to do is we are going to find our probabilities. So the first probability that we are going to look for is we are going to look for the probability that when we randomly select a utility bill, that that specific utility bill will be less than $85. Okay, for this one, I'm going to draw out the complete normal model with all three standard deviations drawn so that you can see how you would do that. Um, it's always important to draw at least a rough sketch of what you're finding so that you can kind of see what your approximate area is. So you can see whether it should be less than 50 or greater than 50, um, all of those different things. So we would draw out a rough sketch of our normal model. Remember that it's always centered at the mean, so we would center it at 110. To go out in each direction, if I go to one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below, we would use this value here. So we would just add 13 to go to the right, and we would subtract 13 to go to the left. If we went out two standard deviations, we would then just add again the 13. So to the right, that would put us at 136. And we would subtract 13 on this side, and so that would put us at 84. Okay. And then our last one, we usually go out three standard deviations. Anything more than three standard deviations is extremely unlikely to happen. Um, so. It's not very common at all, but again, we would just add the 13 to go this way, and then if we subtract the 13, we would go over here. So anything less than $71 in the city is extremely, extremely uncommon. Anything more than 149 is extremely uncommon. So for this particular one, what we are looking for is we are looking for the probability that our x value, that our randomly selected variable x, is less than $85. So on our sketch here, we can see that $85 is just about to the 84, so it's almost two standard deviations below. The probability of something is the same thing as the area under the curve. So the probability that x is less than 85 is the same as the shaded area of the curve. It's talking about what is the proportion or what is the percentage that is shaded. So for this, if you are using table values, which I have another video for or will have another video for um, that tells you how to convert it to a z-score and use the table. But for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the TI Inspire, which is programmed with the normal cumulative distribution function. So we would start with number, like what I'm going to do is you can start a new document and I'm going to add a calculator. To find the probability, we would go to menu and we would choose option six, which is statistics, and then choose option five, which is distributions. And because the normal distribution is the most common distribution that is used, um, since it's the most common distribution that is used, it's the very top two values. The first one is normal PDF, which stands for a probability distribution function. It's talking about one specific value. So if it said exactly 85, that's when you would use that. Most of the time with normal distributions, we are looking for the cumulative distribution. So we are looking for the entire area, area up until a specific point. So in this case, we are looking for number two. We are looking for all values that get really close to 85. 
When you open this screen, the lower bound is always defaulted to negative 9E99. That means that it's negative 9 with 99 zeros behind it. So it's pretty close to negative infinity. It's so far out there that it's very, very unlikely to reach this. Our upper bound would be our value that we're looking for. Since we're looking for less than 85, we would use 85. And then it asks for the mean. In this case, because our mean is 110, um, the calculator defaults to um, the standard normal distribution, which is the z-score. So it uses a 0 and 1 as the defaults, but we are going to change it to the values that we are using for our parameters for this model. So I changed the sigma or the standard deviation to 13, and then we hit enter, and it tells us that the area for this is approximately 0 0.02, sorry, 0 0.0273, or 0 0.02723, sorry about that, it's very hard to see. Um, we would then want to make sure at least for one of them, I'm going to put it in a, a sentence form so that we know how to uh, relate the information to something else. So we could say that um, there is a 2.7% probability of randomly selecting a utility bill that is less than $85. Okay, um, so for this, there's a 2.7% probability of randomly selecting a utility bill that is less than $85. This is pretty uncommon. Anything less than 5% tends to be uncommon. It's not very probable to get this even though it could happen. For the second one, we're gonna look for the probability of between 90 and 120. So like I said on this one, I'm just gonna do a rough sketch. So for this one, we're finding the values between 90 and 120. So if we draw out a rough sketch of our model, it's still centered at the 110, okay? And we can see from above that the 90 is between the 84 and the 97, so it's a little more than one standard deviation. So we would go down to 90 is down here, and 120 would be almost one standard deviation above. So we're looking for this area in between these two values. And we can see that this is a pretty large area. Okay, so it's something that's probably gonna be more than 50% because remember from one to one is 68%. So it's gonna be somewhere in that ballpark, but um, we will use our calculator to find the approximate distribution. So for this, the notation that we would use is we would say that x the probability that X is greater than 90 but less than 120. And so to plug this into our calculator, again, we would do the menu statistics, which is op option six, option five, the distributions, and then option two. For this one, our lower bound is our lower limit. It's the lowest value that we want to find. So we would say 90 is our lower bound and 120 would be our upper bound and our mean is still 110, and our standard deviation is 13. So we would plug this into our calculator, and we see that this is approximately 0.717. Um, since it's 1.5, we would round it to 7.2. So we could say that there's approximately a 71.72% chance of getting a utility bill that is between 90 and $120. This is very likely to happen, so you're very likely to get a bill that is between those two values. The last one that we are going to find is more than 130. Let me just make sure. So the last one it said was more than 130. And if we look at the one where we drew out all of our standard deviations, we can see that 130 is going to be between one and two standard deviations, so it's not quite two standard deviations but it's not going to be a very large probability. 
Okay, so for this, if we draw out our rough sketch of our normal model, okay, um, we would have it centered at 110. And we would put the 130 over here. It's not quite two standard deviations, but we can see that it's not very much area. So we're looking for the probability that X is greater than 130. So more than means greater than 130. So to plug this into our calculator, what we would do is this time our lower bound is going to be the 130. So we would go to the menu, the statistics, the distributions, option 2. 130 is going to be our lower bound. And for this one, we don't have an upper bound, so what I'm going to do is 1E99. This EE right here puts the E in the calculator for scientific notation. Um, so that's saying 1 with 99 zeros behind it. Our mean is still 110. Our standard deviation is 13. And we can see that this is approximately 0 0.06197. So if we rounded to four places, it would round up to 0 0.0620. So we can see that there's approximately a 6% chance of randomly selecting a bill that is more than $130. I will have other videos that do show you how to calculate the z-score first and then find the probability using a table. So this is specifically using the TI Inspire. Your graphing calculator, what it does is it automatically converts these to z-scores and then it finds the area for you. As always, thanks for watching.